Welcome to this presentation on the integration of Atomic with Amazon S3. S3 is a powerful development and storage solution for the deployment of platforms across multiple environment types. For our purposes, we'll focus on the file storage capabilities. The Atomic S3 integration can automate file management processes against the storage solution. The Atomic S3 integration brings several key benefits to application architects that rely on S3 for their work. It makes it possible to delegate file workload to a platform dedicated to process management, centralizing it and making it far more user-friendly than the S3 console. We'll provide some technical insights so that the components are known and the deployment sequence is understood. We'll focus on the configuration of the agent and the design of the two core object templates, the connection, and the six job types, upload, download, copy, verify existence, monitor, and delete. Finally, we'll run through a demo. Atomic Automation plays a central role in orchestrating operations across multiple environments and synchronizes these processes with other operations like deployment managers. S3 does come with batch management capabilities, but they're limited. We can do away with a console and other UIs and configure processes centrally in Atomic and then trigger, monitor, and supervise all in one place. S3 file operations can then be synchronized with all other environments routinely supported by Atomic like applications, databases, and ERPs. If S3 provides native capabilities, the Atomic integration offers a far more expansive platform. File operations can be defined and stored as feature-rich job objects for presence checks, file stability monitoring, or bucket reporting across multiple repositories. Atomic broadens S3's basic functionality with regular expressions, notifications, variables, workflows, parallel processing, URL query parameters, and much more. The Atomic integration proposes significant improvements over the S3 console UI. Atomic's user interface is more streamlined, more intuitive, and comes with an array of capabilities to supplement the basic functions of the S3 console, for example, in the area of authentication. We can store credentials or configure third-party SSO platforms. Externalizing operations to a tool with a high degree of third-party integration means we can synchronize all S3 workload with other types that should be natively integrated with S3. Using various agents and job object types, we can build sophisticated configurations involving S3 working alongside multiple applications, multiple database packages, system processes like backups and data consolidation, web services, and other on-premise workload. A conventional architecture involves two systems, the Atomic Automation Host, and a dedicated system for the agents. The agent is configured with a simple INI file containing standard values, system, agent name, connection, and TLS. When we start the agent, it connects to the engine and adds multiple new objects to the repository, a connection object to store the S3 URL, and multiple job templates, each for a given operation. Let's assume we're managing the assets of four separate S3 repositories. We create a connection object in Atomic for each instance, by duplicating the con template for each of these instances. Lastly, we create S3 jobs in Atomic for each corresponding S3 operation. The Atomic jobs include the connection objects based on the target system. When we execute the S3 job in Atomic, the matching file operation occurs in S3. We can supervise the status of a process or of a given file, and finally generate a job report which includes the targeted files. In Atomic, this S3 job can be incorporated in workflows and integrated with other non-S3 processes. The procedure to deploy the S3 integration is as follows. First, we download the integration package from Marketplace. This package contains all the necessary elements. We unzip this package, which produces a directory containing the agent, the INI configuration files, and several other items, like the start commands. We use the appropriate INI file for our platform. It requires at least four values agent name, atomic system, JCP connection and TLS port, and finally TLS certificate. When the agent is configured, we start it. New object templates are deployed. We create a connection to every S3 URL we need to support. For this, we use the template con object, which we duplicate as many times as we need. Finally, we use the template S3 jobs to create the processes we require. Each job is bound to a type of operation, say download or copy, and references the con. We're able to supervise the S3 process, generate logs, and retrieve the status. 
The S3 process can then be incorporated into larger application-based workflows. We install, configure, and start an agent to deploy the S3 integration. We unzip the package, which creates a file system called agent slash S3 slash bin that contains the agent files. Based on the platform, we rename the agent configuration file ucxjcitx and set a minimum of four values, the agent name, the AE system name, the host name, and port connection to AE's JCP, and finally, the directory containing the TLS certificate. Finally, we start the agents by invoking the jar file via the Java command. The agent connects to AE and deploys the object templates needed to support the integration, the con or connection object, and the S3 job templates. We have a connections folder. We create an S3 connection. We have a choice between two storage types, standard AWS or Google Cloud Storage, which is out of scope. The connection's AWS authentication mechanism, which the agent uses to log into S3, allows for four different approaches. We enter the S3 instance URL and we should be good to go. With the con objects, your job definitions will be able to authenticate with the instance and submit processes. We head to the Jobs folder and create the S3 job. These are the options. Some are self-explanatory like upload, download, copy and delete, in, to or from a bucket. Others like exist and monitor will be tackled later in the video. For now, we look at one of the basic operations, download. Before configuring the job, let's set the agents. Note that the agent does not interact with the outside world. It handles communications with the automation engine. We're also going to set deactivation to never, so as to retain executions and monitoring. The download job has a few fields. The connection object, the optional S3 region, the bucket, the source file path and name in the bucket, and the destination path, which is the local directory on the agent host where the file is to be downloaded. As long as the agents and the connection objects are set and properly configured, you should be able to browse for remote S3 buckets and files. This S3 instance has many buckets, we look for ours. Let's browse for a file. Our S3 console shows one file in the bucket, s3synapse.txt. Atomic should show the same thing. The file is to be downloaded to the agent host. This is the local directory which needs to exist for the download to happen. Note that you can rename the file during the process, which is what we're going to do by giving it a different name in the destination path field. The file permissions section can set ownership and permissions on the file when it's downloaded. When the file is created locally, it will inherit those permissions. The syntax varies from Windows to Unix. On both platforms, you can set a local user and user group, 
say administrator on Windows, root on Unix, or someone else. For permissions, Unix uses a three-character sticky bit format, say 777, for read, write, and executes, which is applied uniformly to the user and the group. Windows uses the same system with the letters R, N, or W, N, or X for read, write, and executes. The uninvalid permission box can force a job failure if your permissions are not interpretable by the operating system, say if you use letters for a Unix agent, or if you've set permissions with no owner. If you select Job Succeed, then Atomic will assign the owner as the user who started the agent. That user and no one else will have permissions on the file. We execute the job. A UI file browser is open on the right to show the file and associated permissions when it's created. The file was downloaded. In the agent log, you see all the properties of the jobs object and the results. Let's focus on the file exist job templates because it's a bit more elaborate. The broader implications are obvious. We have some sort of application process that depends on the presence of a file. We might be generating reports based on raw data files that are collected in a bucket. We could use a workflow to make our report job depend on the success of our S3 file exist job. For this example, we offer a little use case. File exists scans a bucket for assets based on specific conditions. If a file meets the condition, the job simply executes. While we can explicit the file name, we don't have to. We can use regular expressions instead. Here we're looking for doc files with evolving names, which entails a wildcard to be part of a larger documentation published job. They might be very old files with the simple DOC extension, or docx, which entails a second wildcard. Dot star substitutes more than one character to search for many files, and dot question mark substitutes a single character to handle the doc versus docx requirements. Remember that we're looking at the files URL in S3. We check the regex box and request retrieval of the names of all the files that match to be output to the job reports. But there's a caveat. We're only looking for files that start with the word file, which means using the URL prefix. We can pass URL query parameters, in this case, prefix equals file. You could even combine parameters with the ampersand symbol if you wanted to apply more than one query parameter. We show the S3 assets that meet the regular expression. Note that the Details panel in the Monitoring perspective shows the number of files that match your job definition. Let's look at other job types. You can copy files inside S3. You specify the source bucket and source file, the destination bucket and file name. You can upload files the fields are self-explanatory. The same goes for delete. You simply point to the bucket and the file. Finally, we need to spend some time on monitoring. These are cyclical processes that look at file behaviors in the buckets. As opposed to exist, which either completes or fails immediately based on true-false, cyclical monitoring is based on a user-defined time interval. It starts when the job is executed and completes only when a condition is met. The basic fields are the same as what we've already covered, and we've explained regex to scan multiple files and return true as long as one of the files matches the condition. The monitor job template has three types. 
Create, update, and generate. Create scans the bucket and completes when a non-existent file is created and meets the condition. Update works when the file exists and its last modified has been changed. Generates combine the two for situations where you don't know if the files exist or not. If the file does not exist, it applies the create methods. If the file does exist, it applies the update methods. In all three cases, we have three additional fields. Steady state is a time value in seconds. This is the core capability of the monitoring jobs. It's particularly important for file transfer processes. The file may be there, but we have to make sure that it's stable. We can't use the exist jobs since subsequent jobs in a workflow could be working off of incomplete data. The sleep interval defines the frequency of execution of the monitoring process while the job is active. If you set it to 60 seconds, Atomic will perform a check on the bucket once a minute. We have a sorting strategy field. Remember that we're using regex, which means that more than one file conceivably meets the condition. If three files meet the condition stated by regex, then Atomic has to pick one. It will run the job and log the file name in the reports and the details panel. Sorting allows you to set which file it's going to use. You have the option of setting ascending or descending priority on the file name, the size, or the time at which it was added to the bucket. Say you select alpha ascending, then the files are considered alphabetically and the first one returns true. Remember, sorting can only be used with regular expressions. Without the regex box, Atomic will only monitor the hard file name string, in this case file.star.txt, which is obviously not what we want. We have an example. The bucket contains three files, file1, 2, and 3.txt. 2 is the smallest, 3 is the largest. Based on the file name, file.star.txt and regex, all three files meet the condition, but remember, only one can return true. We run the monitor job twice. First with alpha descending. The last file alphabetically, file.3.txt, is the one that returns true. Then we run it again, with this time size ascending. In this case, the smallest file, file2.txt, is the one that returns true. 